All right, so first things first, let's dive into how to find liquid stocks to trade options with. This is one of the most important principles, principle number one, how to find liquid stocks. There's a few ways to do it, and you wanna make sure that you evaluate the stock in a couple of different ways, just to make sure you avoid some pitfalls, which we're gonna get into in just a little bit. But the first thing that I recommend, and one thing I do all the time, is I go to finviz.com, and that's right here. And Finviz is basically a screening tool, a way to look through a ton of stocks and filter them and put in different parameters. And the easiest way to get started is just to click this screener tab right here. Once you click that, it will bring up a whole bunch of options for you to filter and screen by. And you will get a ton of ads and you'll notice that as we go through this video, you can X them out. If you wanna pay for their lowest level, it'll remove all of the ads and that might be something that you wanna do if you get annoyed by it. I don't mind because I just use it for a few minutes here and there. But what you can do is these tabs at the top, you can go to all and you can basically screen your stocks for any of these things. And for the purpose of this video and for the purpose of just simplicity, let's just do a market cap of Let's do, um, you can do a mid, let's do large plus, which means over 10 billion. Actually, let's do mid plus. So we're filtering by mid cap and up. And let's go ahead and do country. Let's just do USA, only US companies. And then if you wanna come up with, um, I guess another really good way to do it is to just come and look at the volume. So average volume is right here. And I typically like to do, mid cap plus us stocks and i like to do anything that trades more than a million shares a day that that can sound like a lot to someone who's new but when you see some of these stocks and how much they trade you'll be pretty shocked um, one million is actually not that much as far as share volume traded per day so if we do that then once you come down here we'll x out that ad you can see it brings up a ton of tickers and you can see they're like 51 pages of different tickers. So then the next thing I will do is I'll come over to the volume tab and I'll filter. And you can see now we're filtering low to high and I'll do it one more time to get high to low. So of everything that I just filtered, average volume, oops, let's do average volume over 1 million. I accidentally put under 1 million. And let's go, there you go. So we're filtered correctly now. We're filtered from the most volume traded to the least and you can see right at the top of the list you've got your Fords, your Apples, your Palantirs, Bank of America. You might think some of these are kind of boring stocks but it's just a place to start. You know that if a stock is trading in the tens of millions of shares per day that that stock is likely going to be fairly liquid. So let's take a look at some of these. Um, you know Apple, everyone's heard of Apple. You could guess that it's liquid but until you actually see it you don't realize how liquid it is. Almost 60 million shares traded average volume per day for Apple, which is a ton of shares. Now, let's go through a firm. You, you have a couple of them that are showing up that uh, feel a little meme-ish. And we're gonna get to that later in the series in a section called get to know or how to know the stocks. Because a stock might have large volume on one day and quiet volume on the next. We don't want that. We want the average volume, which some of these are showing, to be pretty high. So you're going to get these CCXIs and we've got this AFRM. A couple of those newer meme style stocks that are showing up. Usually if you're watching the markets, you're aware of which ones are meme-ish and which ones are more standard high volume stocks. But if you don't, you can do you know, a quick search of meme stocks and see a list of them. And pretty quickly you'll get familiar with which ones stand out. Um, if you look at like you've got your AMDs, that's a standard high volume trader. Um, some of them are sticking around for a while like Lucid Group seemed a little meme-ish a while back and now it's sort of holding in this top 20. If we go to page two, you can get in and see you know, a ton of stuff. There's your Tesla, there's your plugs, your Microsofts, your Ubers. So you, you get the point. These are highly traded large volume stocks. So that's sort of step one is to find, go to, go to Finviz, filter out by what you like to search for um, from based on all this stuff. And then once you've got those figured out, filter it from top to bottom so that you've got the largest moving to the smallest in terms of volume and then pick out a few that, that maybe sound good to you, and then we'll move on to step two, which is 
flipping over here, and let's use Apple as our example. So I'm gonna move myself down here, and let's go ahead, let's type Apple in to the ticker. And real quick, I wanna tell you I'm using the Tastyworks trading platform, which is hands down the best options trading platform on the planet. And it coincides or is also part of Tasty Trade, which is an online options trading content network, tastytrade.com. I'm not affiliated with them, but they do a great job with options education, and that's actually where I learned how to trade options. So this is their trading platform, and it's fantastic. Um, they do have a referral rewards program. So if you go to the link of this video in the description and you click sign up for a Tastyworks account and you sign up with $2,000 or more, my channel gets a big credit and it's really, really helpful for the longevity of the channel and supporting the channel. So I just want to thank you on the front end for that. So go sign up for a Tastyworks account. It's fantastic. So if we have Apple up on our chart, the next way to look at liquidity, and you can see the volume up here, they post at 58.8 million shares traded. And the next thing we want to look at is called the bid ask spread. Now, what this is, is this is basically the difference between where the buyers and the sellers live. So you have someone wanting to sell something that's going to be on the ask, and then you have people wanting to buy something that's going to be on the bid. But the buyers and sellers have to agree on a price. So basically, in between these two prices, the bid and the ask is the market maker. Now, the market maker is basically taking shares from the from the sellers, getting it to the buyers, and filling the buyer's orders from the sellers. And what they do is they keep the money in between. Let's say the bid ask spread, meaning the difference between the prices, is a dollar. If you go in and you can get engaged at this and you buy shares or you try to get filled on shares and the spread is a dollar, that means that when you go then to sell those shares, you might get caught in that dollar wide bid ask spread and you might actually not be able to get what you paid for them. Even seconds later, if the stock moves a little bit and it widens out, the less liquid a stock is, the wider the bid ask spread is going to be. And that means the buyers and sellers have a larger gap or difference between them. So that means that you can get caught in a situation called slippage where you might be trying to buy something and your order might get filled very poorly. You might be trying to buy something on a market order at 142.80 and you might get filled at 142.90 and you didn't mean to get filled there. So there are other ways of getting around that using limit orders, but for right now, you just need to understand that the bid ask spread, you want it to be very tight, very narrow. And look at Apple, 142.80 by 142.81. This is a penny wide bid ask spread. This means that Apple is traded in huge volume which means that there's a lot of people buying and selling, which shortens or tightens up that bid ask spread and allows people to get in and out very quickly. One problem you can run into in the options world is maybe you buy or sell a contract and then you want to get out when you have a little bit of profit, but you find that you're having to give up one penny, two pennies, three pennies, a nickel, six pennies. You're trying to get that filled, but there's no one filling your orders because the bid ask spread is too wide. If it's narrow, it's easy to get out close to your mid price, the price in between the bid and the ask. But if it's wide, like I've seen some of them that can be three, four, five dollars wide, and that is a big problem. You want to avoid that because you're likely going to close your contracts before expiration. And when you do that, it'll be harder to exit because you're going to have to change your price and not get what you want. You're going to have to give up a little to get out. So that's the second part is making sure the bid ask spread in options, usually less than 20 cents, 25 cents is a pretty good way to go. If I go to trade and we bring up, let's open up the 40 day contract and let's go to this 18 Delta put. You can see right now, it's trading on the bid for $1.47. And again, it's closed, market's closed, so this could be a little skewed, but it still is a good, I think, a good example. And you can see sellers are selling at $1.51. So that's only four pennies. Four penny wide bid ask spread is very tight and very liquid. So Apple would meet your requirements for a liquid stock, which is part one of this 10 part principle series. $1.47 by $1.51, perfect. Let's find a bad example. This is one I found the other day. Ulta is a confusing stock because it trades very liquid during earnings, but then after earnings, it gets very light. So right now, the first tip-off 
is you see 700,000 shares. So I probably wouldn't wanna do this because I need it to be at least 1 million or more average volume traded per day. It traded on Friday for 700,000 shares, a little light. Now let's open up a 40 day contract and it's actually better than it had been. If I come out here to the 15 Delta, you can see this is 30 cents wide, 350 on the bid, 380 on the ask. That's a little, a little wide, not terrible. But if you come into one of the weekly expirations, like the 33 day, you're going to see a bigger difference. Look at this one. That's an 80 cent bid ask spread. So if I sell a contract in here and I get 415 and then I want to buy it back, I might have to pay up to get out. It might not be that ideal. So you want to be very careful about the bid ask spread on the stock as well as between the prices of the options contract that you're looking at. This isn't the only indicator of liquidity. The other thing is looking at the bid ask spread on the actual contract. And the other tip off, and this is something that um, a lot of people don't mention that's very important. Tasty Trade gets into this a lot and it's a really good thing to do, is you can come up here and you can click this column and you can basically change it to anything you want which if you go to open interest, you click that, it's gonna tell you how, how much open interest or how many people are sitting trying to trade at this strike on this expiration. So you can notice that, say on the 19 Delta, the 345 strike, there's only one contract sitting there. There's only one, one uh, participant there. If I go to the more highly traded or more liquid uh, monthly expirations, 40 days out, you can see if I come out to say 15 Delta, there's 121, okay? But here's the other thing. Let's go to something like Tesla and let's open up the options chain. Look at this. We come out to, um, let's go to the 15 Delta. Let's go 14 Delta right here, the 630 strike. There's 3,041 participants at that strike for this expiration. So that's something else to really look at is the open interest. You wanna make sure that you're getting a lot of activity at that strike so that you know you can be getting in and out. If you're not seeing anything, if there's zero or one or two, you're likely gonna to wanna to stay away from that. But open interest is a great place to start. It's a great way to understand how many participants, how many contracts are going on on any given strike for any given expiration date. So the other thing I wanna mention real quick while we're going through this is my channel membership that you can click the join button on the main YouTube page and you can sign up and join our private group for $25 a month, which is a really low cost compared to other subscription services or monthly fees because I give you access to our private Slack group which you can get questions answered from me in real time live. I trade there every morning. I post all my trades with screenshots in there and I'm in there most of the day. So it's not like I'm just there an hour and then gone. You can feel free to hang out there all day. We can talk about strategies. It's just $25 a month and most of us in there are making more than $25 a month from all of our trade ideas. So hit that join button, grab a channel membership. It's a great way to support the channel in addition to signing up for a Tastyworks account. So I thank you on the front end for all of this, but it's a good community of people. Um, people come and go, but the core group of people that stick around, it's just good conversation, good ideas. We like to post uh, thoughts on things. It's a good idea trade generator. So come on over and, uh, and sign up for a channel membership. All right, now let's talk about some of the dangers. Let's come over. One thing I wanna talk about is this example I gave earlier where we actually looked at these stocks by volume and we saw something like Chemo Centrics Inc. And we saw something like a firm or you see AMC or GameStop. Some of these meme stocks you have to be careful of because they can gain big volume really quickly and then they can be gone in the middle of the night the next, you know, just a few weeks later. They come and go, the pump and dump style stocks. If you get involved in those, just know that that volume may not hold. I can say with pretty good certainty that Apple is going to hold volume day in and day out, month after month, year after year. Apple is a company that's doing real things and trading real volume. But the meme stock world, that's a little more shaky. That can come and go quickly. So if you come into your trading platform and say you want to trade a 68-day contract, 
and you sell a put in a meme stock, 68 days later, will they still have the same volume? I really don't know. That's something that could be really confusing. So you want to make sure you're aware of, of what meme stocks are trading, what their tickers are, so that if you do get involved with one, you're probably going to want to keep it shorter term because you don't know if it's going to have volume. You know, if you want to buy a leap in a meme stock, you know, what if there's no volume in a year or six months or wherever you're wanting to go in terms of expiration? So that's something to be aware of. And I want to give you one tool real quick to evaluate that. And that's just going to your main chart, going to indicators and just typing in volume. And you'll see, we'll put volume here on the subgraph, and then we can close this out. And what I want to do, and this is a good way to kind of look at this, is let's type in something like, so, so for example, Tesla. If you hover any of these, you're going to see right here all this volume. 46 million, 34 million, 22 million, 16 million. It's always got good volume. Even the low days are in the 12 million handle, okay? That tells you that Tesla, day after day, month after month, has pretty good volume. You can zoom way out. You can go back and look at you know any other time. You can look at December 18th when it had 222 million traded in one day. So you can really evaluate how liquid a stock is. Now, let's look at something like um, one meme stock that popped up for a while was MVIS, which was Microvision. Now, what if you, when Microvision was gaining a lot of volume, like here's 117 million, here's 213 million. What if you saw all this volume and you said to yourself, I'm going to put on a contract that's three months out and you thought, perfect, let's get, let's get in. And you got in, it was really liquid, it was trading really high, and there was open interest. But you knew this was, a, this was a meme stock. You knew this was one that had pumped up. Well, what you can do is you can go back and look, what did MVIS used to do? And let's just go back a little ways and look at some of these days. MVIS on certain days, well, <laughs> I'm kind of killing my own example. There's still a couple million shares traded even down here. But if you go back far enough, like say, here, you've got 393,000. That's very low volume. As I come through here, it's all below 1 million. There was even a 200 and some thousand one day. Keep coming through here. There's no volume, no volume, no volume. So you can see it'd be really bad to trade. So then when all of a sudden you get volume, you just have to be careful because that volume might go away. And we've picked up more volume in here. But now that we're out here, you know, MBIS, it's still trading 3 million, 4 million, 3 million, 4 million, 2 million. That's still decent, but it could very easily continue to degrade back into the half million, 400,000, 300,000. So it's just something to be aware of. Meme stocks can gain volume and lose volume, but the steady players like the Apples, the Teslas, the Rokus, they hold volume and they're likely not going anywhere for the duration of your options contract. Just something to be aware of. Now for a few suggestions and takeaways. One thing I recommend, and this is something that really helped me when I started trading options, was to go ahead and screen out about 20 different stocks, put them on a watch list within your Tastyworks platform, and then only trade those stocks, maybe for your first year. Just focus on trading the stocks that you've pre-screened so that you don't accidentally end up in an MVIS or a GameStop or something that could come and go overnight. So if you pre-screen 20 tickers that you like, find companies off Finviz, sort of cross-reference them with companies maybe you understand what they're doing, you know, you know who they are, maybe you like what they do or the product that they sell. Start there, make sure you look at the bid ask spread, Find that you know less than 25 cent spread on the option contracts. Look for those stocks that trade stock just a few pennies wide. That way you know they're very liquid day to day. And then make sure your average volume is above a million. And you should be good to start dipping your toe into trading options on stocks that aren't gonna get you in trouble because of liquidity. Liquidity is so, so important. It's sort of your ground foundation for anything that you're gonna do in the options market. If you trade something in the options market with low volume, low liquidity, you're likely going to run into troubles and it's not going to be sustainable for generating revenue month after month and year after year. This was video number one, how to find liquid stocks in the 10 part series, the 10 principles of options trading. My name is Jimmy. This is Taking Trades. 
sign up for a Tastyworks account, hit that join button, grab a channel membership for $25 a month. And next week on Wednesday, you can expect video number two, which is how to measure stock volatility and ETF volatility for trading options. I'll see you then.